What's your minimum specification? Hi everyone, welcome to Tech Tech Potato. Today's news, TSMC is committing to building a fab on American soil. This is going to be a new leading edge fab. They're committing to spending over $10 billion over the next decade with up to 1,600 jobs. And we're going to run through the press release and some of the ins and outs of what this deal might entail. So this is today's press release that was came out over the wire. I'm going to read it through with you. TSMC announces intention to build and operate an advanced semiconductor fab in the United States. Um, this would be a fab that applies to their foundry processes. So the idea is that they build and customers come, whereas Intel necessarily builds for themselves. So today, TSMC has announced its intention to build and operate an advanced semiconductor fab in the United States, with a mutual understanding and commitment to support from the US federal government and the state of Arizona. This facility, which will be built in Arizona, will utilize TSMC's 5 nanometer technology for semiconductor wafer fabrication, have a 20,000 semiconductor wafer starts per month capacity, create over 16 high-tech professional jobs directly, and thousands of indirect jobs in the semiconductor ecosystem. Construction is planned to start in 2021, with the production targeted to begin in 2024. TSMC's total spending on this project, including capital expenditure, will be approximately 12 US billion from 2021 to 2029. This US facility not only enables us to better support our customers and partners, it also gives us more opportunities to attract global talents. This project is of crucial strategic importance to a vibrant and competitive US semiconductor ecosystem that enables leading US companies to fabricate their cutting edge semiconductor products within the United States and benefit from the proximity of a world class semiconductor foundry and ecosystem. TSMC welcomes continued strong partnership with the US administration key, and the state of Arizona on this project. This project will require significant capital and technology investments from TSMC. The strong investment climate in the United States and its talented workforce make this and future investments in the US attractive to TSMC. US adoption of forward-looking investment policies to enable a globally competitive environment for a leading-edge semiconductor technology operation in the US will be crucial to the success of this project. It will also give us the confidence this and other future investments by TSMC and its supply chain companies will be successful. In the United States, TSMC currently operates a fab in Camas, Washington, and design centers in both Austin and San Jose. The Arizona facility will be TSMC's second manufacturing site in the US. And then, yeah, TSMC founded in 1987 and all that jazz. So here's TSMC's headquarters. Uh, they're headquartered in uh, Sinchu in Taiwan. Um, and this uh, press release was backed up by a release by the Office of the Governor of Arizona, Doug Ducey. Um, so it's pretty much the same thing. Uh, we're incredibly proud that one of the world's leading technology companies has chosen Arizona for this high-tech project. Uh, one with national and global significance. Um, thanking the president and uh, members of the administration. Arizona has long been a hub for advanced manufacturing and semiconductor industries. I'll go on to that in a second. Uh, the new US facility will enable TSMC to provide enhanced service to customers and its ability to attract talent, uh, reiterating 20,000 wave starts per month. Several sites in the city of Phoenix are being evaluated. Now, this is the only time we've actually seen the uh, the city in Arizona being mentioned. Um, because one of the other companies that's in Phoenix is Intel. Intel has a fab in Chandler, Phoenix, and that would be right next door. So this could be great for Phoenix, um, having this localized pool of semiconductor talent. But you can imagine specialists going from one company to the other, you just in the same way that, you know, two companies in the Bay Area that are very close, Intel, AMD, NVIDIA, Qualcomm has a place there. It's, you see people going back and forth all the time. This is what's going to happen. But the fact that um, the TSMC and the administration um, are focusing on Phoenix, um, you can bet your bottom dollar that Intel isn't too happy about this. Now, as... Um, as with a lot of these things, there are likely to be lots of tax breaks involved. Um, that's how 
they encourage companies like TSMC to build um, sites like this, um, though there has been no actual announcement exactly of what the tax breaks have been involved are. Um, so 20,000 wafer starts isn't actually that much. Um, TSMC would call this a mega fab, um, but in Taiwan it has gigafabs that do 100,000 wafer starts per month, and I think the company total capacity is somewhere near 600,000. So 20,000 on top of that isn't a lot. Um, this would be very minor in terms of TSMC's overall output. Um, Taiwan's third 300mm Fab 15 that they built in Taiwan, um, the number here I've got is $9.4 billion. That's just for the investment to build the Fab. Um, so with TSMC committing $12 billion over a decade or over eight years uh, with and design construction to production in three years, um you can tell that the scale of this thing is actually a lot smaller than some of the stuff that tsmc's done um, and most of that uh 12 billion is going to be for equipment purchase um for every square meter of fab space you need you need about six square meters of what they call subfab space which is where you've got all the chemicals and all the pipes feeding the machines um i once had a um a walk around uh, the Global Foundries Fab in Malta when they were just planning to look into going beyond 14 nanometer that was quite interesting and you end up with uh, a lot of attention to that subfab and that's where a lot of money goes um, now it's worth noting that in these releases they're talking about uh, a 5 nanometer fab in 2024 um, now we've got 5 nanometer high volume manufacturing expected to start this year so by 2024, it's not going to be leading edge. Um, we expect TSMC to be on uh, three nanometer or three nanometer variants, looking at gate all around type devices. This is just a five nanometer fab. It's not going to be leading edge. Um, what it will do though, is enable some of the f uh, customer pressure for the customers that will use the five nanometer node. It'll take that away from Taiwan, especially for the US based customers uh, like AMD, uh, like Qualcomm, like Nvidia, and you know, to a certain extent, Intel, that sort of thing as well. Um, as we've stated, uh, TSMC already has a fab in the US in Camas, Washington. It's actually mainly focused on the larger process nodes. It's by no way leading edge, and it's not a high capacity fab. Um, so this would be, you know, a, a proper venture to build something that's reasonably complex in terms of leading edge. Um, now, part of the whole idea um, of having TSMC in the US is because the US administration is unhappy with US companies working with specific Chinese companies, either directly or indirectly. Um, you may remember that uh, ESMIC, the big Chinese fab, um, they were looking into going into um, high volume 7 nanometer EUV type technologies. Uh, but they had to cancel their uh, purchase of the EUV machines because the US administration put uh, pressure on uh, ASML, the company that actually makes the machines. Now, ASML is a Dutch company, um, but it has operations in the US and uh, it gets uh, very complicated very quickly. Um, so part of this comes down to Huawei. Um, US administration doesn't like Huawei, uh, definitely doesn't want it in its 5G uh, infrastructure, um, but it's now getting to the point where they don't want Huawei to benefit off of any technological innov innovation which also helps US companies. Um, so this article here by Reuters uh, was done in February, talking about new restrictions, uh, how Huawei is, you know, the world's second biggest smartphone maker um, and also a big customer of TSMC. Uh, I believe it's about 10% of TSMC's uh, actual revenue, annual revenue. Um, and, you know, we're looking into uh, moving in, moving Huawei to be cut off from global chip suppliers, basically putting pressure on TSMC to stop working with Huawei. Um, so we know about Huawei being on the entity list, 
um, and you know restrictions on companies like Apple, uh, Qualcomm, Cisco, um, all the people who use um, TSMC, and therefore you know es essentially it's help um, helping cust helping customers of TSMC to do that. So TSMC by committing to build a fab. Um, for US companies will help ease tensions, especially, you know, because Intel's foundry offerings um, haven't really been taken seriously by Intel's customers or by Intel. Um, and Global Foundry is out of the frame for that leading edge technology. They want something within the bounds of the US, um, even if it's provided by TSMC. Um, you know, and one, one could go along the geopolitical argument of Taiwan being China, but not really, and um, what all that means. Uh, the thing is, if TSMC ignored the requests of the US government, it could go very badly for either TSMC or the US or both. So for example, if if uh, the administration blocked US companies from working with TSMC, that would put a lot of leading edge companies uh, just unavailable to build their next generation chips or even build current generation chips and would have a silicon shortage. Um, you know, fabulous semiconductor companies like Apple, like Nvidia, like AMD wouldn't be able to build their next generation products. And, you know, that's billions and billions of revenue for the US. So that would ultimately be a bad idea. Um, uh, the less serious implementation would obviously to be restrict sales of EUV machines and newer technologies. Um, the high NA EUV machines are expected to be available within the next couple of years. Um, and you can bet your bottom dollar TSMC has probably got a ton of orders in already. Um, but by restricting EUV machines, that means that TSMC's ability to supply chips becomes limited, which means companies are going to fight over and pay over the odds in order to get their chips manufactured. Um, so if we look at the revenue, this is third quarter last year. It's picked up an old slide. Um, 27% of TSMC's revenue is 7 nanometer. Um, you know, we see 10 nanometer next to nothing, 20 nanometer next to nothing. Uh, 16 nanometer is still very popular. Um, you know, the Cerebrus big wafer scale, but also all the current um, NVIDIA chips still built on 16 nanometer. And then, you know, 20 nanometer, 40, 45 nanometer. These are all sort of lower margin manufacturing nodes. So they're still pumping out tons and tons of wafers. And all the little chips you see in all your electronics, that's what those go into. That's what those go into. Um, so, this is my idea of why, why this deal exists, right? Um, commit if, if TSMC commits to opening a fab in 2024, um, it will be a mid-range, it will be kind of leading edge, but not right at the bleeding leading edge um it will help relieve some of its pressure on the whole geopolitical situation though the problem i have is i'm not sure if it will actually happen um users may remember that in 2017 foxconn uh committed to building a plant in wisconsin um you know to move tv and lcd manufacturing uh out of out of uh china um and you know this was involving a lot of tax breaks, a lot of subsidies, up to $5 billion, $4.8 billion, if targets were met. Um, but you see here, even though this was announced in 2017, 2018, uh, the factory was set to start production by the end of 2020, but as of December 2019, nothing had been built, right? It's, it's kind of, this was all a big, you know, the president made it such that this was the eighth wonder of the world, and it would bring jobs, 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 uh, to Wisconsin, um, but aside from a few um, a few tax uh, situations and you know uh, the governor exempting the firm from the environmental rules regarding wetlands and streams and the fact that they require a ton of water out of the Great Lakes, um, it's yeah it nothing's really happened here and. You know, other people have commented here, cutting Huawei off from TSMC would be an end of day's move. It's, you have to wonder um, just how much of this is going to happen. If Foxconn is just a PR stunt, then what's going to happen here with TSMC? 
So all of this really makes me skeptical of this TSMC deal. You know, will they actually ever break ground? How much of it is a PR stunt? How much of it is actually going to happen? Uh, the thing that I want to question is uh, what happens come November and in Q1 um, uh, regarding the election, and if there's an, if there's a new administration comes in. Um, what happens with the relationship with Huawei and TSMC with regards to the US then? By making this commitment now, TSMC is, you know, keeping some of the pressure off of it, even though, um, even though the administration is still trying to go after Huawei and companies that deal with Huawei and companies that supply companies that deal with Huawei, it just becomes a convoluted mess. Um, maybe TSMC decides that the funds maybe come Q1, Q2, TSMC decides that the funds that they're going to put into Arizona, um, it, it just isn't worth it. I don't know. What are your thoughts? <laughs> TSMC in the US in a kind of big way? Uh, to be honest, I didn't see it. Le leave a comment below. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe. And uh, there's a bell here if you'd like to be first to receive notifications when I put up new videos. Thank you.